we are ready to make a foray deeper into first peter and to really begin to examine some of the scriptures in light of what was what we shared last week which was a big moment um, in time <laughs> in our study and uh, so i want to do it with a little chart very simple chart um, but we what we found out was that um, Peter's book, 1 Peter, is focused really specifically upon the sufferings of Christ. And one of the things that we talked about last week was we went through some of the scriptures in the Gospels of Peter's experience with not being in tune with Christ during his times of suffering. And uh, therefore, uh, as it were, not feeling it, not he was somewhere else and it wasn't a good place. And the, the several examples we used, he was totally oblivious to Jesus in these things. And he was more aware of his understanding of <clears throat> the way things should go or, or the way he viewed it. This is what's happening. And the Lord's saying that's not what happen, is happening. And so, um, uh, so, you know, last class was, was really, really important if you missed that one. Um, and I assume it's online or, okay, yeah, we got it online, uh, particularly last week's. <clears throat> um, and uh, so I wanted to just start spelling it out a little more. And I wanted to do that first with a, with a little chart. So basically, the chart that you see on the chalkboard that hopefully you see, but if you don't see, um, basically this part of it is just what the name of the class is. Everything under this long line is what we want to what we want to deal with, and we're talking about the period of trial, the period, the 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 time period where you're going through not just a trial. Remember. First Peter isn't just about going through trials. It's not just about going through general sufferings that people go through. It's a specific time that you begin to go through things that the Lord, not the devil, not anybody else, that the Lord has allowed with one purpose, and that's that we would be with him in his sufferings. And yes, the, the sufferings may look like ours, but they just happen to be right along the lines of some of the things that uh, Jesus was going through when he went through the sufferings. And another thing to remind you of, and that is that the, um, the uh, sufferings that, that he was going through uh, were primarily, in First in Peter, primarily spelled out in the trial. Not exclusively, but primarily spelled out in the trial, not the crucifixion. And it's interesting, once we really start getting into this, we're going to see that that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the sufferings of Christ, not the crucifixion of Christ. And he's talking about us coming into those things with him by his spirit, but also in a spirit of understanding, also a spirit of 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 understanding what he went through and uh, being with him in that. And so, so this is this little portion right here underneath is describing that period of time and, um, and the period of the trial. And uh, so, so this little guy right here is you. And um, this is you going through that trial. And that trial, though, is not just, you know, your grandmother died or you lost your job or any of that stuff. It's none of that. Uh, those are trials, all right, but that's not what First Peter's talking about. First Peter is specifically uh, talking about the sufferings of Christ. So the trial is the sufferings of Christ. It is the sufferings of Christ. And so that, has, that requires, if you will, it requires an evildoer now, I don't know how many of you have taken the time to look up the word evildoer in, uh, the, in the book, but it's used quite a bit. 
and it's used in reference, first of all, number one, it's used in reference to, to the person or persons that God is using to bring this down upon your head, as it were, to bring it down on your head. This is, this is the, um, so this can be um, what, what some would term persecution, but, but it's greater than just being persecuted because you're a good Christian. That's, that's not the sufferings of Christ. That's you going through stuff. So we want to, we want to, you know, start to really focus in on that fact because the next bunch of classes, we're going to be showing that and showing how that really, really works. We've, we've stated it now. We've made it clear. But, but now we're going to start doing some things, saying th some things. And then we are really going to specifically get into the scriptures and just take you through it so that you can see it. Okay, so there is a, a, an evildoer, as it were, or evildoers, uh, and mentioned all through First Peter. And their, their job is to bring down the kind of sufferings that Jesus went through upon you, falsely accused, uh, all the stuff that he went through, okay? And, um, uh, and so they, they will do that. Um, but one factor that's in this thing is that the cross represents Jesus. You have Jesus with you, but you, can, you could almost say that he is you know, uh, uh, well, he's in you uh, and he's with you. So, but there's this evildoer that is doing this. But if you will, I'm going to add another person in here that always takes an interest at these specific sufferings. And that's, since I don't have much room, I'm going to go with just writing God. God. God is paying attention to this. You may think that, well, most of the time when I'm going through problems, it doesn't seem like he's even there, notices or whatever. Uh, it's almost like, well, if God's in the mood, he'll be there or whatever. Well, God's not moody. Um, but in these situations, he takes the most interest because he's looking for his son in us through this trial. So God is very interested in this scenario, maybe more than almost any. Sp certainly, I mean, you know, if we're going through trials or if we're going through persecution or if we're going through temptations or whatever, none of those necessarily... Um, really bring forth the spirit and nature of Christ in us. Even if God moves, if he does a miracle, we're usually happy for the miracle more than anything else. And uh, our focus is on ourselves. Well, he got me free. I'm free. He did this for me. And these are the kind of testimonies that we give. And they're not testimonies of God. They're testimonies of what he did for me in the spirit usually that it's given in. Well, these, this thing of the sufferings of Christ, this is where his interest lies. It's like, you know, someone could say, well, isn't he watching, watching this all the time? Uh, yeah, if you want to get scary, I'll say, yeah, he, God's watching you all the time. He knows what you're doing. He knows when you're naughty and he knows when you've been sleeping. Wait, that's Santa Claus. But we, do, you know, yeah, but not like this. This has everything to do with the nature of the lamb, the nature of his son. But further than that, in his people, or let's just reduce it down, in someone, in someone. And to really see that through the, the thing. And we'll, we'll look at the, um, um, the pattern that we talked about a little bit later. Uh, and start trying to spell that out also. All right. So God is extremely, extremely involved, as it were, watching, listening, paying attention to what's going on. And um, so, but there's also uh, something else going on down here. Down here, you've got you in that situation. 
Jesus is there. Now, Jesus is up here, too. We, we, we're trying to glorify him. We want, uh, we want his presence and his sense, but that usually comes towards the end of this thing. Um, so Christ, Jesus, is in us. And even though we're going through this in a right spirit, by, we're doing it by his spirit, we're doing it for his glory also. We're doing it for his glory. We're not just doing it because, you know, well, Christians go through these things. Not this stuff. This gets hard. This gets whatever trials we think, this gets harder. Okay. So, um, so you've got, you know, you've got the Lord is, is there. He's in us. He's, he's, he is um, capable of, of fulfilling all that this whole thing is about because he did it 2,000 years ago successfully and he'll do it then. But we have a couple of enemies in this situation. The first enemy is maybe us, the greatest enemy of all, because if we, and this is what Peter talks about. Now, you notice this arrow is pointing down from the evildoer and then back up. If we can't handle it right, and, and Peter's so much about this part right here. If we don't handle it right, if we start uh, railing back, if we start uh, accusing back, if we start, instead of having the spirit of Christ and going through those sufferings in, that, in the Lamb spirit, then then we, first of all, it's no longer the sufferings of Christ. But the main thing and the scriptures will tell us in 1 Peter is that the word evildoer can be used in two ways. One, of this person who is doing all this stuff to you. And second, you'll find places where it's used of us when we don't handle this right. We don't handle it in his nature when it's not Christ in us. It's not the lamb in us and we're, you know, we're freaking out and we're going through it and we're just reacting. That's all we're doing. We're just, you know, and that brings up the other enemy that we have. And that other enemy is also down here that I didn't put it. And I'm going to put it as a circle with a big S in it. And that's our soul. Our soul is the biggest enemy in this whole scenario, not the devil. But in fact, you know, the devil's only mentioned once in 1 Peter. And it's going to be fun to get to that and show how that works into this, because that's what it's talking about. All right. So uh, our soul, there is this problem with the soul. And you see it all the way through. And the, and the word is used. Uh, so if our soul takes over, then we're going to react back. And we're going to be the same as the evildoer. He's, he's railing. And we're railing back. He's accusing and we're accusing back. He's doing this and we're doing it back. Then to God, we are every bit of evildoer as the evildoers who are doing that to you. The, it's the same thing. You're the, you're the same as an evildoer. And that's why um, Peter does what he does. He, he brings up certain scenarios and starts talking about, well, if you, if you don't do this now, if you don't flow in this kind of a spirit and everything, but you go to justifying yourself and everything, then you're an evildoer. Why? Because you're doing the exact same thing that the evildoer was doing to you, but you're just doing it. You say, well, I didn't do, well, they did this, but I didn't do that. Well, what did you do? Well, all I did was da-da-da-da. Okay, so you, you covered up, justified, lied, you whatever, all that kind of stuff. Jesus didn't do that. Then it's not the sufferings of Christ. That we're not entering into the sufferings of Christ and being with him and understanding and flowing with him. We're just being soulish. We're just being us without Christ. I mean that, you know, if you're born again, you're born again. But the way you live, the way you act, the way you react is more based on your soul than it is the eternal spirit of Christ, the eternal nature. Okay, so we got all that. I think I got all that out. So that's a, that can help us to um, kind of get an idea of what we're talking about tonight. 
and I thought it'd be good to to give us a a, a chart and kind of see it you know before us in that in that way okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time just looking at certain scriptures in light of this or rather in light of first peter because they're going to be scriptures out of first peter that are going to start start describing this so uh, the first thing i want to do is just literally um, read some of the scriptures and then show us uh, how this relates to us in this scenario and particularly show us either faith and 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 uh, Peter's definition of faith is not to believe in that there's a God. His definition of faith isn't um, to believe that God will rush to your help when you need it. Not Peter. Uh, his definition of faith isn't to uh, believe for a new car. His definition of faith is one primary thing. And that is that when you get into this situation, that you, even though evildoers are attacking you, and even though your soul wants to react, you stay with the Lord so, so that you, here, and here is, a big thing that we had talked about in one other class, you, you don't allow your soul to be Lord of your life. And by, by going by Christ crucified, you have experienced the salvation of your soul. Okay? Your soul was out of control. Your soul was heading for death. Your soul was born of another seed but but peter talks about the salvation of our soul and you know we've discussed this before but we've got a lot of new or a certain amount of new people here um but you know in truth when you get born again you, your soul doesn't get saved we say I'm gonna, we're going to go out and win souls you don't win souls actually you win, somebody gets born again and their spirit is changed that's where the new birth takes place in their spirit and it's not it's not a, your soul. Your soul gets saved, as it were. And, you know, there's so many places in First Peter that say that. So being born again, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Being born again is a process. And uh, Dennis, I know you're on here and we've talked about this, this these three things and how they relate. So... Um, so that so the two main things I want to talk about here is faith um, and then salvation. And I want us to read the scriptures and I want us to see, does that apply to this? Could that apply to this? And now remember, one of the things that we're doing and we will do is that we will uh, tonight and I don't know, maybe to next time, I don't know how long, we will kind of take these things in different manners to help us prepares more waiting for when we just flat out just get into the scripture now pretty much from here on in this class we're going to be reading scripture but i mean to go down the scriptures like this and see it but there's certain things that we have to be looking for that we have to be aware of and if we're not then then we will read the salvation of our soul as simply getting saved and we will read faith simply as, well, I've got faith going through this trial that I'm going to, you know, that God's going to justify me or whatever. I mean, the last thing God wants to do when it comes to the suffering of Christ is justify you so that you can be out of it. Jesus went through the sufferings of all of that, not so God could prove that he's God and get him out of it or that he's his man he went through all of that to show forth the very nature of God, to manifest that spirit. And, and so that we could, like from Peter, begin to realize how far he was in all of his mess ups, how he missed the Lord in this area so many times. But the salvation of his soul finally happened. And now he writes only specifically about it in First Peter. 
All right. So looking at some scriptures here. Uh, this is uh, we'll be in first Peter chapter one at first. And we'll probably do some more of that in the uh, when we're going through the pattern. <clears throat> but right now we're just looking at scriptures. First Peter one five. Turn in your Bibles. First Peter one five, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, now it's easy to read that in light of nominal Christianity, but let's read that. And what we're going to do is try to read every scripture in light of this, and we'll have some of them that just blatantly, so loudly declare it that you can't help but realize that this is all that he's saying. All right, so <clears throat> we are kept by the power of God. So this, this little person here is going through the, time, the period of the trial, but it's really the sufferings of Christ, okay? And so he's got a choice. He can give in to his soul. He can, he can rail back at the evildoer. He can, be, he can become an evildoer or manifest that he's an evildoer, even though he's... He seemed so Christian before that. Um, or he can be kept by the power of God. Well, the power of God here isn't, again, I just said that, it's not a power to get us out of this. He's not kept by the power of God that says, uh, um, don't worry, just be calm, you know, through this, you know, be patient, you know. Um, this is... You are kept by the power of an endless life. You are kept by the nature of the Lamb, you know. And so, uh, who are kept by the power of God through faith, okay. But this is not just faith. This is like any faith, but this is faith unto salvation. But this is, as, as we will see, we'll go through all of these scriptures in the first chapter and show that over and over he keeps saying the same thing. It is faith unto salvation of his soul so that his soul doesn't win the day or manifest and, and spoil everything, you know, kind of like what Peter did before. You know, Peter did, well, now Peter's an apostle. He's been in the ministry for 30 years. He's doing it again. No, he's not. Uh, he's, he understands what this is. So who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Everything in that sentence can be read as nominal, except for the pattern of this that it's saying is going to be said over and over and over in so many different ways so that we finally go, you know what? He's not talking about the nominal view here. He's not. All right, so, and you're not gonna you're not gonna figure that out by just reading verse five of the first chapter. You know, we're gonna have to go through the whole book together before you can be convinced, hopefully. And in that, then the word will have gotten you, and you will see the vastness of Peter's heart in this one area of his failure when it came to the sufferings of Christ, of denying the Lord, or, or so, so many things, you know, so many things. Uh, even walking on the water. I mean, he's walking on the water, and, you know, he's going toward Jesus and everything, and, and, and then he starts looking around, and his soul gets involved, and he starts sinking, and Jesus reaches forth his hand, and he said, you know, oh, he says, why did you you know, I forget the word, but why did you doubt, you know, oh, ye of little faith? Well, you're going, well, this was pretty hard, you know. I mean, if you're Peter, it's pretty hard. Nobody else tried to walk on the water, you know. I, you know, and uh, that's not what Jesus is saying. Why did you doubt and, and, and blow it concerning the miracle? You know, Jesus was disappointed. Look, Look at the story and look at Jesus' response. It's that same one when he turned and looked at Peter when he denied him three times, you know. So anyway, we've been through that. And, and um, 
so that's what this is saying. Who are kept, we are being kept by the power of God in relationship to the Lamb because, okay, so where, where would we get that from? Where would we get that the power of God is in relationship to the Lamb? Anybody? Yeah, good. First Corinthians chapter 1. Good, good. How many of you yelled that out? I couldn't tell. There's so many voices rising. Absolutely, absolutely. That Christ crucified is the wisdom and the power of God. All right. So, and then revealed, he's being revealed in us, in his nature, and being with the Lord as if part of his body is also with him in that spirit. And then, he's, and then it says, ready to be revealed in the last time now. See, here's where the, the book of 1 Peter, the book has to, we can't read again a couple of verses and think we got it. The book will continually talk about the last time, or it uses different wordings, but it's always like at the end. In fact, I think I've got some of the scriptures down. At the end of this, at the end of this trial, there will be glory. He will be revealed. He'll be, he'll be seen, and it'll glorify God, and, you know, and the Father will be glorified by Christ Jesus in you. Okay. So, so the last time isn't talking about the last, you know, the last days, you know. I mean, this, if this was talking about that, you know, there's been generations for 2,000 years that never saw the last time. But we can all see the last time, the last days, the last um, thing that this is talking about. We can go through this. We can, we can be with Jesus and be against our soul and come out on the other side not an evildoer but one who glorified the father with christ crucified all right so now let's look at uh, verse 9 we'll probably come back to maybe both of these scriptures a little bit uh in a few minutes but um first peter 1 9 receiving the end of your faith okay so there it is there it is the end, receiving the end of it, okay? That's what's going on here, is that Peter failed so many times, he's now trying to get us so we don't do that. So he wants us to go through this by the Lamb and receive the end of our faith, even the salvation of your souls. I wish I could, I, I wish... I wish we were all in one room together, and I wish when I said that, it just hit you like lightning, and everybody went, praise God, you know. But, you know, maybe at this stage, some are still going, is this really what that means? Hang with me, or hang with Peter. Let's hang with Peter and stay with this. Okay, so, but it's, it's saying the same thing, see, and that's just, He's only a few verses away from verse 5. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Okay, so, so now let's think about that. I wish I was more prepared on what I'm about to say here. But let's think about that. Um, you, read in, um, you, you read in Luke um, 24 on the road to Emmaus, um, and they're walking along, and, um, and Jesus comes along beside them, and they're going, oh, this was really bad. He suffered. He suffered, yeah. Yeah, they crucified him, and it's really bad, and, you know. And so Jesus begins to open the Word, and it says, you know, starting in Moses through the Psalms, and all the prophets, all the prophets spoke of the sufferings that Christ would do. Okay, that's not the only place it says that. The prophets weren't writing about the history of Israel. Yes, 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 it fit in with everything. But according to this and according to another place that will run into the prophets, this, uh, their goal was showing forth the sufferings of Christ um, 
uh, which, which they call salvation, but it's the salvation of their souls, which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Okay, so this is, they're seeing, they're, God, the, the Spirit of God is coming on them, and they're seeing, and they're writing all these books, you know, the prophets, all the different ones, and they're writing all of this stuff. I mean, look at Hosea. What is that one about? Anybody think that that one has anything to do with the sufferings of Christ? Amen. I heard two of you say yes. Amen. Thank you. Um, all of them are declaring this very thing, but they're not entering into that in the sense of, yeah, I mean, I think to some degree they are, but they're inquiring um, pertaining to that which they're seeing when this thing is going to come because they're going, well, we're going through stuff, but this is telling us of something else, someone else, someone going into deep sufferings. And they're going, I want to see it. I want to see the one. I want to see the person of this. They're prophesying and inquiring diligently. What does this relate to? <clears throat> so, uh, now let's go to verse 7. I know we jumped one, but let's go to verse uh, 7. We went to 5, we went to 9. Let's go to Verse 7, chapter 1. Okay? That the trial of your faith. What? This is the trial of your faith in the Lamb of God. This is your trial if you're going to be with Him where He needs you to be, wants you to be with Him in those sufferings. Again, you see, you see uh, them... Um, you know, going to the garden to pray, and you see Jesus saying, y'all, three, you know, because there were 12, and then, you know, the the 12 got down to pray, and he took three of them, got them closer, and then he went a little further. That's what it says. He went a little further. He goes, y'all pray for me, you know. So he's in there sweating great drops of blood and all this kind of stuff, and they're sleeping. They're sleeping. He comes back, has to stop what he's going through and go back and wake them up. I, I need you to pray, you know, with me. Could you not pray with me for one hour? That's what, it, that was his words. Could you not, you can't be with me? And this is my, this is the worst moment of my life, you know? And you're not even aware you have no clue what I'm going through, but you will, you know. That's like uh, James and John bringing their mom and talking to Jesus and saying, we'd like to ask if uh, they, one could sit on your right hand and one could sit on your left. And Jesus says to them, can you drink? Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will. Can you drink of the cup that I, you know? And they go, yeah, we can, we can do that. And he says, well, you surely, you surely will. You definitely will. But as far as sitting on my right hand and left, that's not for me to give. The father's looking for a son, and he's checking us out on what kind of spirit we can have in these things. That's not... Not up to me. You'll go through it. You'll drink the cup. I don't know if you'll, you know, how well you'll handle all of it. So, uh, whom, uh, let's see, verse 7, that the trial of your faith, and that's what this is. It's trying that kind of faith. And the faith that he talks about in First Peter is, from everything I can see, always the definition found within the realm of this scenario. All right. The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth. Okay, more precious to who? The trial of your faith is more precious to who? Being much more precious than gold that perisheth. And perisheth goes along with corruptible, which is used in incorruptible throughout the book. 
and again different wordings but same meaning it's important to him it's precious to him it's precious to the lord it's precious to the father that you get in this situation and your soul because your soul is just going well i don't like this and your soul is just saying well this is too hard and your soul is just saying well i i, I can end this right now you know or i'll just attack them back and maybe that'll back them off i don't know what all i know is that that trial of our faith if we go through it with him it's precious it's precious to him it's precious God, do you have anything that's precious to you? Some would say, yeah, my children. Well, this is, this is precious. This is precious. You know? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. What if that's not referring to physical death? What if that's equal to the word precious here and that god is that way um, so you know nobody wants to go through the things that the sufferings of christ represent nobody wants to go through that um, the the truth of the matter is probably because it is a trial it is a it is a period of trial so there's a good chance that most christians will go through it at least once and you know, if we just reject the Lord, reject the cross, reject his heart, reject what's giving what's precious to him to save our own soul, not to save our soul in the sense of the scriptures talking about here, but in the sense of saving us from my soul, my soul dictates. And so I will save you from having to go through this instead of being saved from your soul that you could let the land live in you. So, that the, this is going a lot, <laughs> a lot slower than, than I thought. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth. See, he, he's even telling us, this is precious to me, and gold isn't that precious. It perishes, but this won't perish. This has eternal reality mixed up in it. And that's the thing that Peter realized. He realized how precious this was to Jesus. He realized that it not was just precious on a, well, I'm glad I did this and I'm glad it's precious to you. But on an eternal level, this, and we'll see that throughout 1 Peter, we'll see that it has eternal effect and it, has, it is eternal things. It, it's, I mean, if God had a shelf, and he put different things that we did on that shelf right up there in the top with the eternal things would be this. Okay, so though it be tried with fire, and that's the other thing, you're gonna, you know, uh, you're gonna find, uh, um, let's see, where did I put that one? Uh, this is uh, 1 Peter 5.10. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Jesus Christ. See, we see salvation in that, but He's staying with His subject. Uh, Though it be tried with, or let's see, uh, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Settle you. This can't be eternal glory in heaven. Oh, I'm going to glory. Not with following up after you have suffered a while and not after he's had up, make you perfect and established. This is, and by the way, the, these scriptures are in a context that I'm not reading and the context bears all this out. Um, is uh, bearing out that these are not scriptures relating to salvation so that we can all just stay nominal Christians and only think about going to heaven someday and how glorious that's going to be. He, you know, the, Jesus did his part. He suffered. 
And so we're just going to go, okay, well, I just want to go to heaven. I just want to be happy. I just want my life to be wonderful after I leave this earth, you know. And he's saying, I would, the Father's saying, I would like to see the evidence of the one that I put inside of you. The same way that he manifested at the cross and at the, at the, uh, the judgment um, manifested what I raised from the dead, what I exalted to the throne, the lamb nature, slaughtered lamb. I exalted that. I'd like to see a little bit of that in you. So, <clears throat> a trial of your faith being so much more precious than gold, though it be tried with fire, um, after you have suffered a while, though it be tried with fire, <laughs> I'm really trying to keep track of all these scriptures, uh, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's using, this is basically the same as verse 9. Um, and it is saying the appearing of Christ is when in this situation our soul doesn't appear and he does and we don't revile back and we don't have to justify and we don't have to, you know, talk about the, the evildoer to make everybody see how evil they are so that we can see how righteous we are when in fact we're an evil doer when we do that. And God, I'm telling you, he'll not see any difference. You say, yeah, but I'm, I'm the victim here. You're not supposed to be the victim. You're supposed to, you're supposed to, well, you're supposed to be the victim in that the Lamb of God is the victim. You're supposed to enter the sufferings of Christ with the Lamb of God as he's a victim. But you're not a victim by this evildoer. You're, you're supposed to be the vessel of this life. All right. So, um, okay, so now that was verse 7. Let's read verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not, Yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Whom, having not seen, you love. So he's saying he hasn't appeared because it, it keeps talking about Jesus showing up here in this time of sufferings of Christ as an appearing or as him being revealed it always does and it, and and here's the kicker see we're just we're just dealing with beginning scriptures he's going to really start just saying it look and it'll be the same order it'll be the same reality over and over without any doubt right now you're sort of having to take my word for these things which is fine but don't let's stay in the word let's keep coming back and then go through scriptures and then go through chapters and then compare chapter to chapter and then go all the way through all the way through and go oh my god for sure peter was moved by one thing that affected his life forever and he got it right right there um whom having not seen because I think that's what he's saying. He didn't show up in me in those other times. But now his appearing, um, uh, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory because now he begins to come forth in that situation. All right. I, uh, you know, I'm just wondering if I should quit. And here's the reason why I'm going to say that is because I want to get into the pattern, uh, and most of you who've been with us from the beginning in this particular class know that uh, real early on, we determined that there was a pattern um, of, of events that happened, and, and it was like a cycle. It was cyclical, and it just kept happening through the book. And so you all remember, those that were here, you remember that I had you look them up on your own. I told you what to look for, but I didn't make, I, I, I expected you to start finding this for yourself. And we got into class and 
we started laying it out and man we found a bunch of them same cycle over and over really the cycle that we've talked about right here except we hadn't got to the glory that shall shall appear down here yet um, so I think instead of breaking that up and of course there's no guarantee uh, but instead of breaking that up um, uh, it would, I think it'd be more powerful if we came back and then all of you particularly that have really searched out these patterns and found them we can now add because we didn't know what the one thing was which it was the sufferings of Christ we didn't know that at the time we just were seeing the the pattern the word pattern with all that different elements uh, but now we know what it is and now it, it'll be much more powerful to us because we're going to just lay the template of this over every one of those cycles and go it fits it it fits it fits it fits it's the same thing it's the same thing that's important that's so important that's why i had you do it the way we did it and i heard that from the lord to do it so so let's pray and let's stay hungry for jesus amen father blessed be your name there are things that are precious to you they're precious they're precious you would love to see jesus not not jesus in us as we witness or evangelize not jesus in us as we do good deeds in the neighborhood or not jesus in us in all the christian ways that we we do that but father the, the precious part the part where you see jesus in us where we have where we've been our soul has been saved from from reacting and being the beast and being the 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 head and being the lord that controls our lives and controls our minds and controls our mouth instead the lamb does that and it has been brought under and has been saved it's been saved father and i just ask you to to let your spirit be upon us from week to week so that um, it's not just classes god help us no father i have no desire to teach classes i want i want what you want i want jesus to be found as precious in the realm that you see him most precious so that the end of this will be your glory you'll be glorified uh, you'll you'll rejoice with exceeding joy father and i just i just want that and i want that for you and we want that i believe that the reason why we're in this class the reason why we, we we come to these things and take the time out isn't just because we have nothing else to do because there's a virus out there father these are the same people that have been doing this when there was no virus look at our hearts look at our hearts see our hearts see that we want you see that we want to we want to be penetrated by the reality of what is precious to you. And in doing that, we want to be able to, to, to by Christ, lift those things up to you, as it were, as a sweet savor of Christ to you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, thank you. And Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.